Hey church, glad to have you joining us here on this morning. It's our second Facebook Live video. Uh, as is always the wonder of technology. And a couple little technical difficulties, but we are with you now. Glad to have you joining us. Uh, it's so interesting to, to have to uh, be in an empty warehouse and, and to be doing this with none of you here. We really miss you being here on a Sunday morning, and it is a little bit odd. Uh, but we're making the best of it, and here we are, joining virtually as the church. Uh, before we get started, let me map out what we're going to do. I'm going to pray for us here in a second. Scott's going to lead us in some singing. I'm going to preach, and then we're going to sing some more, and then we'll go about our days being isolated in our houses. And before I pray for us, let me give you a reminder, and that's this. Uh, continue to be the church. May we continue to be the church. And what do I mean by that? Just because we can't physically to be together, let's still get together through great technology, FaceTime, Zoom, uh, Google Hangouts, whatever else it might be. Pick up your phone or use your phone on there. Call one another. But whatever it is you need to do, stay connected, check up on each other, be connected as the church. And most of all, uh, feel free to contact us if you need anything. If you need prayer, we'd love to pray for you. If you want to hop on a phone call, just let us know. We want to continue being the church. Let me share for you what I shared the other day. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verses 37 through 38. See, a lot of us feel really isolated right now. A lot of us feel really alone. And if you're in that spot where you're feeling isolated, might be wondering, where is God in all of this? Let me remind you of Paul's words in Romans chapter 8, verses 37 through 39. Paul says this. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, neither the coronavirus <clears throat> or or social distancing, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The good news this morning is that nothing will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let me pray for us. Uh, Heavenly Father, we're grateful for technology that allows for us to either, even gather like this. And Father, I want to pray for my brothers and sisters who I'd normally be seeing here at this hour, but instead are back watching on their, on their computers or their phones. Lord, I want to pray a prayer of blessing over them, Lord. As we open up your word and as we sing, would it bring encouragement to them and would it bring honor and glory to the name of Jesus? Lord, we love you. We know you are good. May all that we do bring glory to your name. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, we pray. Amen. If you feel comfortable standing with us, go ahead and do that right where you are. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty, so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes a whole earth with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless and now in wonder? The King of glory, the King above our kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross Oh, you laid down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus is singing for All that you've done for me Who brings our chaos back into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter, the king of glory, the king of 
up of all kings, rules and nations, the truth and justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross. Oh, you laid down your life that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Worthy. Worthy, worthy, yeah, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You laid down your life. That I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Sing with me. How deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure That he should give his only son To make a wretch his treasure How great the pain of searing loss The father turns his face away As wounds which mother chose in one Bring many sons to glory. Behold the man upon a cross, my sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed, I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers it was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished his dying breath has brought me life i know that it is finished I will not boast in anything, no gifts, no power, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer. But this I know with all my heart, his wounds have paid my ransom. And Jesus, we do thank you for that. God, we thank you for the time that we can have together. God, that we can worship and exalt your name. Your name is above all names, and we give you this time. We give you our hearts. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I think you wanted to say you could be seated. <laughs> We're really glad to be able to do this. And uh, I do want to uh, make one or two quick acknowledgments. The first is this. 
uh, behind the camera, Mike and Cassandra O'Connor, and they were going to be mad at me for saying this, have put in countless hours to make sure this can happen. Uh, so I want to say thank you publicly to them uh, doing this. And uh, yeah, just thank you guys for doing that. You know, when Carrie and I, when our kids were young, uh, like most kids at a young age, they went through a time of being scared of the dark. Uh, all kids usually go through this. Uh, it would especially be the case if one of them woke up in the middle of the night. If they woke up in the middle of the night and, and, and they realized it was dark around them, they would immediately start crying or be scared. And do you know what the best solution was to calm them down? I want you to think about this. If you've had kids who've been scared of the dark or scared of other things, I want you to think about what was the best solution? Because for my kids, it wasn't even necessarily turning light on. But even more effective, uh, a more effective way to calm them down when they were scared of the dark was simply if Carrie or I would go into their room. If one of us would go to them, that just our presence would signal to them that everything was okay, that things could settle down, that they could go back to sleep. The solution was our presence. See, friends, these are scary times where we all are feeling uh, to different degrees unsettled. Uh, all of this stuff with the coronavirus, uh, a lot of us are worried about about how will it affect my health, how will it affect my job, how will it affect our money, and every aspect of our lives is being touched by what's going on. How will it affect my relationships? It's a legitimate time to feel anxiety and fear. Like a lot of you out there right now, you're feeling this underlying sense of fear. And the question before us this morning, and for this whole season, is when we are afraid, what's the solution? To ask it another way, what is the antidote to fear? And what I want to suggest this morning is that just as the solution for my children when they were afraid of the dark was presence, namely the presence of carrier eye, I want to suggest this morning that the solution to our fear, the solution to the fear that many of us are feeling right now, is also presence. Namely, the presence of God. See, it's interesting the way things work. A lot of people would call it coincidence. I like to think of it as providence. That the planned sermon for this week, if nothing was out of the ordinary, if we were all sitting in this room together, that the planned sermon as we're going through this series called Walking in Victory was to be the presence of God. That was planned months ago for this Sunday, but we never could have imagined where we would be at in this moment, as we sit in this new reality. But as we sit in this new reality, I can't think of a better thing to discuss and a better truth to celebrate than the presence of God in our lives because it is the presence of God that is the antidote to fear. And that's what I want to spend our time talking about this morning. Like, did you know? that one of the most frequently given commands in all of the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, both, is do not be afraid. Fear not. And on the surface, that, that feels unfair, doesn't it? Because fear is a natural emotion. And there are things that legitimately cause us fear. See, but I don't think that this is a command to not fear because there's nothing that ever causes fear or anxiety. And I certainly do not think that God is making this command because fear is wrong or fear is in some way sinful. So then why would God command multiple times, almost countless number of times in the Bible, why would God command do not fear? Well, to get at that, I want you to think about some of the stories. 
I want you to think about some of those stories where do not fear came out of the out uh, came from. There's Joshua, right? In the Old Testament, there's Joshua. Joshua was basically second in command to Moses as Moses is leading the Israelites throughout the wilderness. But then Moses, he's about to die, right? Moses knows he's about to die. And a new leader has to be brought up. A new leader for the Israelites has to be, uh, has to be uh, given. But understand that this was not only an enormous amount of people, but it was already a, also a disobedient and unruly people. All they knew as their leader was Moses, and they caused him some heartache. Put yourself into Joshua's shoes then, as Moses says, Joshua, you're going to be the one to lead the Israelites into the promised land. You're going to be the one, Joshua, who is going to take over for me. Put yourself in Joshua's shoes. That would have brought a lot of self-doubt, a lot of fear. But what does God say to Joshua? Joshua, don't be afraid. Do not fear. Or think about Jeremiah. You got the prophet Jeremiah called to be a prophet at a very young age in a very difficult time. His calling was going to be a hard one. His calling was going to set him up for a really difficult life that would be scary. But God says to Jeremiah, do not be afraid. Or think about the disciples. Let's go New Testament. Think about the disciples. The disciples have had a front seat to Jesus' ministry all along. They're there for the teachings. They're there for the miracles. They've got it. They see this movement going on. But then Jesus is arrested. Jesus is crucified. Their dreams go away. They don't know what to make of this. But then, three days later, Jesus comes out of the tomb. Jesus rises from the dead. And again, their dreams start again. Jesus starts doing miracles again. He's teaching again. And they're thinking, he's going to take his throne. It's time for Jesus to lead the people. And at that time, Jesus gathers them together and says, now it's time for me to ascend to heaven. Now it's time for me to go away. What would that have been like for the disciples? It must have been paralyzing. See, friends, in each of these stories, and there are countless more throughout the Bible, people are given a task to, or put into a situation that seems overwhelming, that has the potential for fear, that could be paralyzing. And each time he says, do not fear. But when each of them then are given the reason for not being afraid, I want you to look at the reason and the result. Joshua, facing the overwhelming task of succeeding Moses and leading the Israelites into the promised land. Joshua is told by God in Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. Why? For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. The Lord will be with you wherever you go. Therefore, Joshua, don't be afraid. This is a promise that Joshua could hold on to going forward with boldness rather than fear. And that's what happens. He goes forward in boldness and leads the people into the promised land. Jeremiah is facing a, this difficult, overwhelming calling by God. But Jeremiah gets this from God in chapter 1, verses 7 through 8 of the book of Jeremiah. But the Lord said to me, do not say I'm too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Do not be afraid. Because I'm with you. Or take the disciples unsure of what's coming. Unsure of what's coming. But we look at this promise in Matthew 28 verses 19 and 20. Jesus says to them, go and make disciples of all nations. 
baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. You don't need to be afraid. I'm with you, Jesus says to them. And that's the story of Acts chapter 1 through 28. Amazing things happen. But friends, don't miss the common thread in these stories. That what cast out fear and what instilled confidence was the promise of God's presence. That was the game changer. See, brothers and sisters, we live in a time where it is legitimate for us to be afraid. And I just want to put that out there. This is a legitimately fearful time. But the question is, what will we do with that fear? And what I want you to hear this morning is that just as God's presence was promised in the stories we looked at, so God's presence remains promised today. His promise of the Holy Spirit is still valid. We can hold on to the fact that Jesus' name is Emmanuel, which means what? God with us. And that we see over and over again that we do not worship a distant and disinterested God, but instead one who is actively at work in and through his followers. We worship a God who is active and one who is present. And because of that, in the face of fear, we can have faith and we can have boldness. We can have comfort in the fact that God still promises to be near to the brokenhearted. We can have trust and rest in God's presence and find comfort and peace, hope, and boldness. Think about the famous psalm, Psalm 23. If you go to verse 4, it says, When we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will not fear evil. Why? For you are with me. We can rejoice in James chapter 4, verse 8, that as we come near to God, he will come near to us. Friends, we worship a personal and near God who is present and active in our lives. And because that is true, then even when things are scary, we can fear not. I want to spend the rest of our time talking about one of my favorite stories in all of the Bible. If you've been a, a, a person at Four Corners Community Church for the 10 years we've been here, uh, this story might be the story we've looked at the most times. Matthew chapter 14, verses 25 through, 23, uh, through 33. Let me read it for us. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, but when he saw the wind, he was afraid and he began to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. Oh, Peter, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? And then they climbed into the boat. The wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshiped Jesus, saying, truly, you are the son of God. Friends, here's what, I, here's what I wanted to do that story. We're all familiar with that story. But I want you to remember how terrifying that must have been. How, must, how terrifying would that have been to see what they thought was a ghost walking on the water? But how does Jesus ease their fear? He says, fear not, for it is I. And Peter, doing what he impulsively often does, says to Jesus, if it's you, tell me to walk to you on the water. And Jesus says, come. He says, come. And Peter takes that step, that amazing step of faith, and he becomes the very first person other than Jesus to ever walk on the water. 
How amazing must that experience have been for Peter? How amazing must it have been to walk on water? He's got his eyes locked on Jesus and he's walking on water. But verse 30 tells us that then Peter starts to notice the wind. He starts to see the waves. He's reminded that he's out on the water and on the waves and the wind. That they're raging and they are scary. And the second he takes his eyes off of Jesus and puts them on the waves and the wind and the storm. Peter begins to sink. He cries out, Lord, save me. And Jesus immediately does it. He says, Peter, you were doing it. Peter, you of little faith. And they get into the boat. I wonder what Peter said to the other disciples. He's like, hey, I might be wet, but I walked on water. Friends, we're in a time when, metaphorically speaking, the wind and the waves are raging. This coronavirus is a big deal. It feels like a raging storm. The financial implications in your life feel like a raging storm. But maybe your storm has nothing to do with the coronavirus, but is instead failing health or a broken relationship. See, we face things on a regular basis that feel like raging waves and wind and a storm and can leave us fearful. We feel like we're going to sink. We are afraid. But I want you to notice what happened in that story. As Peter focused his eyes on Jesus, he walked. But as Peter focused his eyes on the wind and the waves, he sank. When we focus our eyes on the fearful things of this world, we sink. But we are invited to put our hope in the very presence of Jesus, to focus our eyes on him. And as we do, gain comfort and peace, boldness and power. See, we may have some hard days ahead of us. And the question for each of us is where will our focus be? What will we do with our fear and our struggle? See, friends, the message today is that the antidote to fear in Scripture was always God's presence, and it continues to be the answer to fear today. God is still present. God is still active. God is still providing peace and hope. God is still working, and God is still bigger than any virus out there. And because of that truth, we can lift our heads up. We can look to him and we can have confidence. See, brothers and sisters, in the coming weeks, the question before us will be, what will our perspective be? Where will our eyes be focused? As you are feeling uneasy and fearful, allow that to point your eyes back to him. When you feel fear, allow that to remind you of the promises of God, that he will be present and he will be active. When you feel fear, choose to lean into that, lean into your faith in a God who is good. In times that are unprecedented, lean into that which is precedent, that God is the same yesterday, today, today, and forever. Lean into Isaiah 41 10 that says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. See, friends, the coming weeks may very well be a fearful time that tests our faith, faith. But regardless of if we get a virus or if the stock market tanks or whatever else is the situation. We can keep our eyes focused on him and be reminded that God is present, that God is active, and that God still promises to never leave us and never forsake us. And friends, that is truth and that is presence that will always conquer fear. Let me pray for us. Lord Jesus, we are grateful to be able to proclaim your word today. God, I know I feel fearful. 
Every time I turn on the news or social media, I know people out there feel fearful. But God, may we be reminded this morning uh, that your, uh, your presence is the antidote to fear, that you've promised to never leave us or forsake us, that over and over and over again in Scripture, you say, do not fear, for I am with you. God, may we know your presence deeply today. And that as you are present, Lord, would you provide for us hope? Would you provide for us peace? Would you provide for us uh, boldness? Would you provide for us joy and life, even in the midst of a time that is fearful? Father, we love you. We trust you. And we proclaim today that you are good, that you are active, and that you are present. And in that, you are a firm foundation. Father, as we go on into singing, may all of this bring glory and honor to you. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. And I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night that you tell me that you are pleased and that I'm never alone. Your good, good Father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you, it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. And I've seen many searching for answers. Far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide, cause you know just what we need before we say a word. Your good, good Father, it's who you are, it's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Love so undeniable, I can hardly speak and be so unexplainable. I, I can hardly think as you call me, deeper still as you call me, deeper still as you call me. Deeper still into love, love of your good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. It's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Your good, good Father, it's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. To who I am. When peace 
like a river attended my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul though satan should buffet though trials should come let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and hath shed his own blood for my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought my sin not in part but the whole is nailed to the cross and i bear it no more praise the lord Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. And Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as the scroll. The trump shall resound and the Lord shall descend even so it is well with my soul it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. A uh, couple quick announcements. Let me just remind you, obviously, there's no programming going on. Stay connected with one another, okay? Community groups, hop on a Zoom call together. Uh, Bible studies or just friends, just hop on calls, Facebook, whatever else it might be. Work hard to stay connected. Uh, if you don't follow our Facebook page, do it, because all week I'm going to be posting some vi uh, videos just to try to encourage us 
and to uh, keep us connected. Also, we have another separate Facebook page going for children's ministry for our kids. And so I would encourage you, uh, if you're not a part of that Facebook page, but you've got kids, Wendy is putting great stuff on there. So send me an email, send Wendy an email or a Facebook message, because then we got to invite you because it's a closed group uh, with because it's our kids. Uh, so we will send you an invite and you could be a part of that. Wendy's putting up a lot of the videos and the curriculum that we use on a Sunday morning that you can then do with your kids. So uh, if you're not a part of that group, shoot me an email, send one to Wendy or on Facebook and we'll get you connected to that group. Before we sing the doxology, let me again for our benediction read Romans chapter 8. Know in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen to that. Let us, uh, uh, I want you to stand wherever you are. Why don't you stand and let's sing the doxology together and then we'll be done. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 